What is up dear YouTube, uh, this is J-Man Time and today I have a video on the evolution of Argentinian tanks or the evolution of tanks of Argentina. Now since 1943, Argentina has been one of the few South American countries to design and manufacture some of their own tanks and tank-like vehicles. So let's go over the long history of tank development in Argentina starting in the middle of World War II in 1943. In 1943, Argentina was actually pretty neutral during most of World War II, but in 1943, there was actually a military coup that happened in Argentina and the previous president from the earlier part of the war was overthrown and replaced with a more neutral slash pro-American president. And as a result of this, Argentina had actually begun a military expansion and this expansion didn't just include the development of tanks, but also the development of aircraft and some naval vessels. But in 1943, Argentina had actually developed its first tank, and that is the first tank on the list, the Noel DL-43, also known as the Jaguar. The Noel DL-43 was a limited production medium tank that was developed between 1943 and 1944. It was actually designed by an Argentinian colonel named Colonel Alfredo Baizzi, who has served in the Argentinian military for over a decade and has studied a variety of other tanks being used by both the United States, Germany, and some of the US's allies like Britain and France. Now, keep in mind, in 1943, Argentina was not allowed to buy any of the newer American tanks, for example, the M4 Sherman or even the M3 Stewart light tanks. They were also not allowed to buy any tanks from Germany. Keep in mind, Argentina was neutral. Before World War II, Argentina had purchased weapons from both Germany and the United States, but the Americans had barred the Argentinians from buying weapons from Germany, but the United States also didn't sell any new ground equipment to Argentina. As a result, the Argentinians had to develop some of their own weapons, and the Noel DL-43 Jaguar was the first tank developed by Argentina as a result. Its main armament was one 75mm German-made Krupp Model 1909 Howitzer. Its secondary armament was one 7.65mm Allen machine gun, a rare Argentinian light machine gun or coaxial machine gun that is usually fitted to armored fighting vehicles. And it was also fitted with three 7.65mm Madsen machine guns. Its armor thickness was 80 millimeters and it had a speed of 40 kilometers per hour or 25 miles per hour and a crew of five, but only 13 of these vehicles were ever constructed. The Noel DL-43 Jaguar entered service in late 1944, but at the same time that this tank was entering service, the United States actually took the arms embargo off of Argentina and the Argentinians were allowed to purchase newer American equipment, including the newer, the newer models of the American M4 Sherman tank and some of the American M3 and M5 Stewart light tanks. So in total, the Argentinians only produced about 13 of these vehicles and the Noel DL-43 served in the Argentinian military up until the late 1950s where they were decommissioned and either sold for scrap or used for spare parts until they were eventually destroyed later on. Thus ending the history of Argentina's first medium tank. The next tank on the list is actually not really a tank but it is a conversion tank. It is the Yakari tank from 1944. During the same time period that the Noel DL-43 was in limited production, the Argentinians also began converting artillery tractors and harvester tractors. The Yakari was basically an improvised armored artillery tank or tractor tank that was constructed as a stopgap measure in order to make sure the Argentinian military had some tanks of their own. And these vehicles were actually converted from American-made International Harvester DT-18 agricultural tractors, which were also sometimes used as artillery tractors by the Argentinian military. Their main armament varied. It was either two 7.65mm Madsen light machine guns or 
were two 12.7 millimeter M2 Browning heavy machine guns. The armor thickness of these vehicles varied between five and 10 millimeters, and they had a speed of 11 miles per hour or 18 kilometers per hour in a crew of three to five. Now these vehicles also doubled as anti-aircraft platforms as they were used to tow various 20 to 30 millimeter anti-aircraft guns purchased from a variety of countries that includes the United States and some of the anti-aircraft weapons purchased from Germany during the pre-World War II era. These vehicles served from 1944 until the early 1950s where they were decommissioned and either converted back into agricultural slash artillery tractors or were simply sold for scrap, thus ending the history of the Yakari series of improvised armored artillery tractor tanks from 1944. The next tank on the list is actually a very interesting modification of an existing tank and that tank is the Sherman Repetitionado from 1978. And this was actually a modification of the old M4 Sherman tank carried out by various Argentinian modification facilities in 1978. Now, in 1977, Argentina had actually purchased 120 old World War II vintage M4 Sherman tanks, along with some of the Israeli Sherman tanks that were up for sale in the later 1960s and 70s. And these were all rebuilt into the Sherman Repotencionado series of medium tanks. And these tanks had a main armament of one to 105 millimeter L44 L57 FTR main gun. Their secondary armament was one 7.62 millimeter FN mag coaxial machine gun. And their third line armament was one 12.7 millimeter M2 Browning heavy machine gun. The armor thickness of these vehicles varied between 38.25 to 51 millimeters, depending on the model of Sherman tank. And they were actually fitted with a French engine, the Poyo 520 eight cylinder diesel engine imported from France. These vehicles had a speed of 48 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour, an increase over the 25 miles per hour that the original Sherman tank had. And they had a crew of four. 120 of these tanks were modified and served in the Argentinian military from 1979 until the early 2010s where they were finally decommissioned and replaced with more modern tanks, with more modern tanks of the TAM series. And the next series of tanks is actually the most interesting of the modern tanks, and that is the Argentinian TAM-1 series of tank, also known in Spanish as the Tank Argentino Medianado. And these were medium tanks, or these are medium tanks, that were constructed between 1977 and 1983. Now, Way back in 1973, was looking for a medium tank to replace the old M4 Sherman, but at the same time, Argentina was also beginning to manufacture its own military equipment for export, as Argentina, like Brazil, is one of the top manufacturers, one of the top five South American arms manufacturers slash arms exporters in the world. And at the time, the, the TAM-1 tank was originally designed for export to Peru, which was an ally of Argentina at the time. But Peru eventually canceled the contract, and in 1977, the TAM tank project was redesigned to serve in the Argentinian military. And from 1977 through 1983, the tank went through multiple design concepts until it was finally adopted in, in 1983. The TAM-1 series main armament is one 105mm FM K4 model 1L main gun. Its armor thickness varies between 37 and 50 millimeters, and its speed is 75 kilometers per hour or 47 miles per hour, and it has a crew of five. 280 of these TAM-1 tanks have been produced since 1983. And actually, there is an update to the TAM tank, but I will get to that later. Now, during the same time that the TAM-1 series was in development, 
the Argentinians also came up with several offshoots of the TAM-1 series. And the first offshoot is known as the TAM VCTP or the Vehicle Combat Transport Personnel Vehicle, which was also designed during the same time as the TAM-1 tank project. This vehicle also entered service in 1983 also. This vehicle is basically a heavy duty armored personnel carrier and its main armament is one 20 millimeter German made Rhine metal mod 202 20 millimeter auto cannon. Its armor thickness also varies between 37 and 50 millimeters and its speed is pretty much the same as the TAM medium tank but it has a crew of three and can carry upwards to 12 Argentinian troops. Now at least a hundred of these vehicles have been produced for the Argentinian military and it is a pretty good or you know standard armored personnel carrier. The next tank like offshoot of the TAM-1 series is the VCA Palmaria and the Palmaria is a sub-propelled howitzer or a sub-propelled gun that was designed between 1983 and 1990. This was an enlargement of the TAM-1 series of medium tanks. The VCA Palmaria was an enlarged version of the TAM-1 series fitted with a much larger turret mounting a 155 5 millimeter 6.1 inch L41 howitzer. And these howitzers are actually made in Italy. The armor thickness of this vehicle varies between 8 and 40 millimeters and this vehicle has a speed of 70 kilometers per hour or 40 miles per hour and also has a crew of 5. In fact, this vehicle is said to be either a copy of an Italian self-propelled gun or the Italians simply copied this vehicle for their own use. But the VCA Palmaria is the heaviest version of the TAM-1 series of offshoots. The next tank on the list is a very rare Argentinian light tank concept, and that is the Patagon tank from 2003. Now this was actually meant to replace the older Austrian-made Sauerwerke SK-105 Krausier which is a light tank produced in Austria that also serves currently in the Argentinian army. Now this vehicle was meant to be the Argentinian version of that vehicle. These prototypes were constructed between the years 2003 and 2005. This light tank had a main armament of one 105 millimeter rifled bean gun. Its secondary armament was one 7.65 millimeter coaxo FN mag light machine gun. Its armor thickness was also 8 to 40 millimeters and its speed was 70 kilometers per hour or 43 miles per hour and it had a crew of three. Now only six prototypes of this Pentagon tank were actually produced and it was actually tested against the older Crozier light tank from Austria. And it was basically the same, you know, a, a combat wise, it was pretty much the same, had almost the same abilities. And ultimately the Argentinians basically rejected the Pentagon light tank and kept continues to use the older Austrian Crozier light tanks to this very day. But the Pentagon at least was one of Argentina's attempt to break away from purchasing European designed tanks and armored fighting vehicles. And the final tank on the list is actually an upgrade to the older TAM-1 series of tanks and that is the TAM-2C from 2012. Now this is actually a redesign or upgrade to the older TAM-1 series of medium main battle tanks from 1983 except these tanks are from 2012. The upgrades to the old TAM-1 and into the newer TAM-2C series will include a new 3 prong gyro stabilizer and other newer systems to be included from the Israeli company known as Elbit Systems based in Israel. Argentina and Israel are basically military trading partners at this point so Israel is actually offering to upgrade many of Argentina's older weapon systems including the older TAM-1 series of medium battle tanks. Now the main armament of this newer 
Tam Tusi Medium Main Battle Tank will include a 120mm Rhine Metal RH120 slash L44 main gun, but other than this, the armor thickness, speed, and crew capacity remains the same as the older Tam 1 series of medium main battle tanks. Only 71 of these conversions have taken place between 2012 and today, but ultimately Argentina plans to phase out the older TAM-1 for the newer TAM-2 series that would be modified and upgraded in Israel as part of an agreement between Argentina and the State of Israel. And that basically ends the evolution of the Argentinian tank. Argentina has not come up with any newer tank concepts for the future, but if they do, I will have to make a video on those tanks as well. But which are your favorites? If I had to choose, my favorite of these Argentinian tanks are the first tank, the Noel DL-43 Jaguar, and I also like the rare tractor tank, the Yakari from 1944. But what are your favorites on this list? Please tell me in the comments section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off.